and welcome back. What's going on? To my channel. Yeah, her channel. Except this time I'm Mrs. Tori. We're married. Let's go. <laughs> we did it, you guys. We are married. And the number one requested video from you guys leading up to our big day was that we did a wedding Q&A for you when we got home. That's exactly what we're doing today. We have so many questions to answer. Yeah. We both yeah. asked on our Insta stories for you guys to send in questions and oh my gosh, I think I have over 60 questions screenshot at this like point. Like good ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, you got a lot of burning questions and we have got a lot of burning answers for you. We're answering from serious to simple, so let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. I have so many. Oh, I don't know where to start. Look at all of the screenshots that I have. I made a folder of it. Okay, so together we got over like 10,000 questions and basically what we did is we screenshotted the ones that the majority of people were asking. So exactly. we're just gonna go through like the things that everybody wanted to know. I also got some unique ones that we'll go ahead and answer as well. A fire appreciate, round. I appreciate the unique ones. <laughs> so the first thing that everybody wanted to know is why we chose California and what the location and the venue of our wedding was. Sure, we're from Florida and this time of the year, it's hot or cold. And when I say that, I mean it's either pouring rain or it's 90 degrees outside and there's no in between. And we wanted an outside wedding. So the only place we could think of that was gonna be perfect, guaranteed. And we also wanted to give our family an experience. We never even thought for a second we would do Florida. We no. always knew we wanna do a destination because so many of our family and friends have never actually traveled. Like we have family and friends who have never really even been out of Florida before. And we're like, we wanna give them the excuse and the reason to get on a plane and go see something so beautiful, yeah. incredible weather, and have an experience that they would never have. And it was purpose. Yeah. It Pur was. Purpose, it was perfect. It was. All right, next one. Given that you're both foodies and know the best of the best, what food did you guys have? Go ahead. Okay, I wanna start off with our rehearsal. So we had our rehearsal dinner and then we had a cocktail welcome party yep. the night before on Friday. And that was hosted at Nobu, which worked out so perfect because it's me and Jordan's number one favorite restaurant and we do not have it in Tampa. So the majority of our guests have never had it before. Yeah. And again, it's one of those experiences. It's a very expensive place to eat. It's a place that a lot of people aren't gonna just make a trip and go to Nobu. Yeah, so we yeah. were like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting that we were able to do that. No, for. it was it was amazing. The it was food. delicious. And every single person that was there was just like moaning. Like, we should oh. have put in some shots. We had some shots of some people eating. We definitely like, got some shots from my vlog. If you guys haven't watched our wedding vlog, that's also on my channel. So keep that out. For our actual wedding day and ceremony, we had all sorts of things. Yes. When the guests walked in, they were greeted with champagne. Yep. And then of course we had, you know, non alcoholic champagne for the youngins or the people who don't want to drink. Mm -hmm. And they toured the garden for 30 minutes. And then for cocktail hour, we had the most incredible finger food. Then for the actual wedding ceremony, we had what's Paula it? LaDuke, which is one of the illest caterers that you can get for a wedding. The experience working with Delicious. them and creating our menu was so incredible down yeah. to like, we went to their tasting room and we got to pick out every single little detail. Oh my Everything. gosh. Fun fact, she actually picked out something different than everybody else for her dinner. We did a ribeye for dinner and she went with a miso cocktail. I did. And she Just didn't for me. eat it at all. I didn't have one bite. Why? We'll get to that later. Okay. Some things happened, okay? <laughs> Some things happened. But as far as the actual food goes, I'll show you guys the menu right here. Yeah. It was very simple dinner menu, but everybody said that it was one of the best meals of their lives and that's what matters. We wanted to keep it nice and simple and yeah. incredible. Yeah. For me, the best part was all the finger foods that were passed around were during so cocktail good. hour. We had an oyster shucker girl yeah. who walked around serving fresh West Coast Kamamudo. Is that how you say it? Oysters with all the Kumamoto. Kumamoto yeah. with all of like the fixins, <laughs> the limes, the lemons, the sriracha, the oh. salon, all the things. So that was Delicious. such a cool touch. Um, and Delicious. then we had like little mini sliders, we had little mini tacos. Oh, they did a more seasoning uh, uh -huh. little plate at the end of the night, cause you know, everybody's drinking a little bit during the party hour. So they went and passed around some more seasoning burgers, mm -hmm. some pizza toast. Yeah, like delicious. jalapeno poppers, things like oh, that, yeah. that were his recipes, which was so cool. But yeah. the food experience was great. We also had someone making fresh homemade donuts with like the <sighs> cutest little that. cart in the corner that we decorated. Again, I didn't eat any of it yep. at all. Yep. Next question was, was I nervous walking down the aisle? Oh my God. Okay, so I was not in any world expecting the nerves I had because yeah. leading up to the actual wedding day, there was not one nervousness in my body. I was really? so, no, I was, I was think about mess. how many people the entire time that we planned our wedding was like, you're such a calm bride. Like I was so chill. Yeah. I was just like, it is what it is. It's Jordan. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> what is there to be nervous about? 
I wasn't even really nervous for the first look, but something hit me like 20 minutes before walking down the aisle when they were like, T minus 20 minutes until Jacqueline walks down the aisle. And I was like, Whoa! like I just like had this moment where I realized like, holy shit, like everyone's gonna be looking at me. And I'm not to sound corny, the second that I saw Jordan, I can't tell you who was there. I can't tell you what music was playing. Literally, it's like everything just went silent and I had the most peace I've ever had in my entire well, life. Yeah, that's because she looked at me up at the altar and I was really like, <laughs> Boo -hoo no, crying. there's a. You know how it is. Like one person levels the other one out. There's a shot that Charlie um, captured that everybody in our family. <sighs> My favorite and, shot. And our friends, they've all, they're all said that that was like their favorite moment was when I saw Jordan the way I looked at him. We can put it in here. Yeah. But that really was the moment where I saw him and I was just like. My baby, like this is just, there's there's absolutely, oh. it's like everything just went away. It was nothing to be nervous about. That's so when so he sweet. cried, I was like, stop it, you're making me so nervous. <laughs> but yeah, I was nervous and I think that's totally normal. Yeah, are you going on a honeymoon? <laughs> The answer is we went on a mini moon right after our wedding. And the reason why we did not plan a honeymoon after the wedding is because it was a destination wedding. We were in California for a week already and to like pack on top of that to go somewhere else for a week or two, it was just too much. So we went down to Monterey and Carmel. Mm -hmm. Again, that's in my vlog. You can see what we did down there, but that was our little mini moon just so we didn't come straight home and get back to normal life. But we will be planning something in the summer or the fall. But something where we're gone for like at least a week, if not like yeah. solid 14 days. <laughs> Cause um, we definitely came home. We had a week to ourselves here. Like we planned it. So we had a week out there and then we had a little mini honeymoon for like three or four days. We were so ready to get home. We were trucking around seven full size suitcases <sighs> with carry-ons. I it, got sick. It was just. We came home. We were supposed to stay longer, but we booked our flight to come home. Cause we're like, okay, he started to feel sick. We're like, we gotta get home. Yeah. We got home. He got so sick. He was on the couch for like five days. I was in wifey mode. I was like over there with my crock pot. Like what can I make? <laughs> <laughs> he was so sick. And then we had to get right back to work. And I was like, yeah. Oh. My advice to anyone getting married is take the longest amount of time that you can after your yeah. wedding, even if you cannot afford or don't want to go somewhere. If you're going to yeah. sit in your house, yeah, don't work for as long as you can. There's just such like a <laughs> special bliss Mm -hmm. after you get married and you just want to like extend that as long as yeah. you can, you know, like without letting real life get in the way, so. 100%. How many dresses did you try on before you found the one? It was the easiest experience ever. Again, I swear to God, everybody was like, you are the easiest bride in the world. I made three different appointments in Miami to go try on dresses. We went to the first bridal shop. It was the third dress that I tried on. Yes, the third dress that I tried on. And I was like, I'm done, this is it. And I canceled Wild. all my other appointments. Uh, it's crazy because I went to the specific bridal shop because I wanted a specific dress. And I thought like, that's the dress I found online. I love the designer. And I was like, this is gonna be it. I tried it on and it was not it. Mm -hmm. I'll show you guys a picture of it right here. It's so cool, but for me, it felt trendy and it felt fashion-y. Yeah. Like, but it didn't feel- Bridal. It didn't feel like regal. It didn't feel timeless. It yeah. didn't feel, yeah. it wasn't giving me my princess, princess. fantasy yeah. that I saw for myself. So, it was the third dress. I tried on a fourth one and I was like, get it off. I want to put the third one back on. I remember she called me like an hour into well, her I, first appointment. Remember, and she's I, like, I, I turned it into a reel. I recorded it. Yeah. And she's like, found it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like they had two whole days planned and all these appointments. And I was like, wow. I mean, this is coming from the girl who literally like walks into any hotel room. And was like, I want a different one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I was shocked, but <laughs> I knew I was like, okay, if she genuinely feels this way and she found her wedding dress, it's the one. And it was my friend, Linda, who she pulled it. She's like, I want you to try this on. And I looked at it on the hanger and I was like, I am not going to like that. By the way, this is my dress behind. Oh yeah. Right that's now. the dress. <laughs> that's part of the dress. <laughs> it's got a train. I think they said is 11 feet long. It's very, very big and very long. But when I saw it on the hanger, I was like, I'm not gonna like it. And I put it on, I was like, whoa. But I did make a lot of changes to it with the designer. Yeah. I added a different layer of tooling with a little sparkle in it. I changed the sleeves, I changed the back. And one little random thing, this is the crazy part. When I got home from Miami after choosing the dress, I was sitting on the couch with him and he said, I have one question about your dress. And he said, actually, I don't even want you to answer it. I'm just gonna ask the question. I didn't wanna know anything. Cause he didn't wanna know anything. He didn't wanna know if it was a tight dress, if it was super long with a train, he wanted to know not, not one detail, so yeah. I didn't tell him anything. And he goes, does your dress have like flowers on your arms or like some sort of like, like lacy, like lacy sleeve? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, what the hell? And I called Linda, my mom, Micah. I'm like, oh, what? Like, yes, it does. Like, how random is that? And, he, and, I, and I said, I don't know. And he goes, I don't know why. I just picture you walking towards me with like lace on your arms. This man knows oh, me. I'm like, baby. you already knew. You already knew my the dress. Baby. I oh, know it. I think about it. I just get so happy. <laughs>
I did not know the tongue was out. I have a little lip gloss on, so you gotta... This is another one for me. There was a clip that looked like you were wearing sneakers. Did you get married in them? Yes, I did. I never in a million years wanted to get married in heels. That's not my vibe. Sneakers are true to me. And for yeah. for us, both of us yeah, on, our, on our day, whatever is traditional, if it doesn't feel like us, we're not doing it. Yeah. Like, it's so I just, I was like, sneakers are so me. I'm comfortable in them. And I've been telling him ever since we got engaged, I'm like, I just want to run to you. I want to literally just like pick up my dress and run down the aisle and jump in your arms. So I was yeah. like, I'm wearing sneakers. Yeah. And you did end up running to me, not down the aisle, but yeah. 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 And so I did wear their Swarovski crystals, uh, air, their dunks, I believe. I think they're dunks, yeah. Yeah. Yes, but I have pictures of them right here. Again, put on the screen for you guys to see. Did Jordan wear socks? Where did this originate from? Like seriously, we both got so many people asking if you wore socks. Let me ask you something. Do I look like a stinky foot mother <laughs> I will say one thing about Jordan, talk your shit all you want, but he's a very, very clean, good smelling When man. I tell you, <laughs> I would, would never, never, would never not wear socks inside of a shoe. I'm not exaggerating. Not even to like go get the newspaper. I no. wouldn't do it. I hate being barefoot. What it was was a European cut tux. We can show pictures on the screen of what that looks like. Show it all. And the, it's this is what European cut tuxedo. And it's look usually like. tuxedo shoes or a loafer with no show socks yes. and a little higher cut on the bottom of the pants. Come on, guys. <laughs> you guys you will find anything. Yeah, I got cheesy toes. You're Ew. tripping. <laughs> okay, this is hands down the most Hot. asked question. Hot okay. question. Okay, how much should everything cost? <laughs> no, I'm gonna answer it. It costs more than 1,000 and less than 1 million. <laughs> Obviously, we're not gonna answer that question, you guys. That's like very tacky. But I will say this, <laughs> honest to God, there were moments throughout the process where things got so stressful where I was like, oh God, we should have got married in the backyard. Honest to God, if you guys truly love each other, you could get married in front of the people that you love the most or just with each other and mm -hmm. you're gonna get the same exact yeah, thing. I That's agree. all that it boils down to at the end of the day. I completely agree. I think that the actual like wedding experience is more so for your friends and family to like come and celebrate you and have that. Like yeah. it's been, is it three weeks tomorrow? Three weeks tomorrow. Holy crap, okay, three weeks tomorrow. And still every day, everyone's still texting, still calling, still yeah. FaceTiming about the wedding. Just like, we're gonna be talking about that when we're 90 years old. Like it was just an experience for everyone. but. As far as the actual wedding goes, I agree. Yeah. It would have been the same thing if we did it in the backyard and then we had yeah. hot dogs and Doritos. Yeah, fun fact, the most memorable part of the wedding that all of our guests have said was our ceremony mm -hmm. and that's because of us yeah. and the person who married us. Yeah, 100%. What were you most nervous for? Honestly, the thing that I was the most nervous for mm -hmm. was our friends and family making it to California mm -hmm. because there's a ton of people who are not well-versed travelers that we were asking to literally travel across the country. And once they landed, we got married like 35 minutes outside of San Francisco. So it was just a lot of moving parts. Yes. Um, when it comes to the actual wedding, making it through my vows was what I was most nervous about. Yeah, for me personally, I was most nervous that I was gonna do something to f the day up. I was gonna do something to ruin Jordan's experience, I, I don't- Impossible. I, okay, I literally booked an emergency therapy session 48 hours before we got on the plane. I'm not joking. I You're text my therapist and I'm like, I need to talk things out. I did a session with her because I was like, I'm convinced I'm gonna do something. Like, what if I cry so hard that I puke at the like at, <laughs> at, at the altar? Can you imagine? Or what if I'm walking down and I pass out? Or like, I don't, I was just so scared. I was like, what if I drink too much and I get drunk? No one likes a drunk bride. Like, I was just nervous about everything that had to do with me. It was completely She said fun. she was the easy bride. She was stressed about it. I was. I was stressed about me doing something She was something just trying to, to be perfect and there was no reason to be perfect. Was there any part of the wedding that you guys wished that you planned differently? Yeah, me personally, yeah. I wish that we planned better for the weather. If you've been mm -hmm. to California, the weather changes a lot if you travel 30 minutes and we were up in a mountain or down in a valley. I don't know where, where it was exactly. <laughs> I know they're complete opposites. But it ended up being so cold and so wet. Late at night. Late, like late at, at night. night yeah. It got it was ninety percent humidity, which and it was is like insane. 50 degrees. And it, it was, was it, it felt like it was twenty. We did have heaters and all of that, but it was still just it was so wet, cold yeah. that it was like, oh you could tell the people who were drinking and the people who weren't. I yeah. barely drank, so I was freezing, but I'm like, whatever, it is what it is. Yeah. So many people who had had several drinks, they're like, oh, I didn't even know know that it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> the people who who weren't drinking, they're like, it was freezing. Yeah. So yeah, that definitely. You know what, I have to say this, I hadn't even told you this, but for me, I think that it would be allowing more time 
for photo and video with oh, other people than yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Like I actually wish that during our first look, I wish that we would have brought our like our families in for that. And we so? would have had more time because it was rushed in between the sunset ceremony and then before it got dark for yeah. the reception. There's definitely several shots that we didn't capture. Like I don't have one picture with our friends, his best man, his best friend. I don't have any pictures with anybody because it was like rushed as the sun was We didn't setting. even get a picture with like our families combined. Yeah. Because we ran out of time. I would say during your first look to pull in like key people in your life and include them in photos, like at the end of your first look, that's yeah. something that I would do different, yeah. definitely. What were you stressed about that ended up being 100% okay? Uh, this is such a silly thing to be stressed about, but for me, it was that there was such an incredible floral bloom at the garden where we were getting married that our altar had bloomed bright red roses. Oh, yeah. And we had spent so much money on florals to all be white ivory and blush tones. Yep. And so our florist was, he was like, I'm not sleeping tonight. Like, I don't know <laughs> what I'm gonna do. I'm not sleeping because there's red everywhere. And it ended up just like being one of those things where it's like, who cares? Yeah, like now we have red out of nowhere. We have this random pop of color. He was so stressed and I was like, oh gosh, like everyone's in black and white and pinks and now we just have like these red, but. Yeah. Nah, yeah, no, be Who fine. cares? Was there anything for you? No. I was just stressed about people showing up and they showed up, so we're good. Except one. There was one guest who actually missed, missed, missed the their wedding. flight and missed the wedding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that did happen. Which fragrances did you wear? Okay, you guys, I have not even talked about this perfume. It's so random. I got it off of Amazon. I think it was $50. So good. I bought it like a month before the wedding because my nail girl, Raina, she came over and she was wearing it and I was like, what are you wearing? And it was so good that I bought it. He was so obsessed. I swear to God, I can spray this perfume upstairs in my closet and he can be in the kitchen and it's like, Oh, it's like the cartoon where it's like you're floating and your nose just like. It's like a mating call. And he's just like floating up the stairs. And he's like, what's going on? I'm like, oh my God. Like he's obsessed. And it's literally on Amazon. Um, It's called 1111. Uh -huh. And I think it's by Lake and Sky. And it's super yeah. cool because 1111 is a very, very important thing to me. It goes back to my young childhood with my dad. So yeah. when we found out that it was 1111 and it ended up being my wedding day fragrance, it just all worked out perfect. Yeah. But I wore perfect. it all weekend. Me personally, I bought a bunch of colognes and I was trying to figure out which one. And then I ended up just going with the cologne that <laughs> I wore when we first met and started dating and stuff. And it was Abercrombie Fierce, mm -hmm. like legendary fragrance. He wore it the first year that we dated and then he switched over and started wearing like more expensive colognes and yeah. all of that. And then he didn't wear it for like two years. And then he sprayed it on himself one time. And same thing, it was like a mating call. I was like, oh my God, this is like when we first started dating. And, I, and so it's like my favorite thing on him ever. Yeah. And he only wears it like in a blue moon. So yeah. it was perfect. Perfect. Did you guys write your vows in advance or did you procrastinate? I started writing my vows like a year ago. I made a note in my phone and I just would type down little random things that would pop in my head. Random memories, things that I wanted to make sure that I included, but it was a total disaster. Like it was like, just like word vomit, yeah. just random little things, just like one liners and sentences. And I would randomly come downstairs sometimes and she'd just be like bawling on the couch. I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, I'm writing your vows. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't start really writing them until the week of the wedding. Yeah. I started compiling it and putting yeah. it together. And for yeah. me, I could not figure out what my opening sentence was. And I was like asking everybody, what should my opening sentence be? And then once I came up with it, I was like, there it is. And it clicked. And then I wrote them entirely the day of our rehearsal. And it took me probably like 20 minutes and I just paced back and forth and I yeah. just like put the, all the paragraphs You like together. compiled everything. Yeah. 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 Me personally, she was frustrated. She's like, you're crazy. I was not frustrated. I was just like, how shocked. do you have this confidence in shocked. yourself that you're gonna be able to do this the day before the wedding? Yeah, I told her I wanted to wait till 48 hours before the wedding because when I'm like in my emotions and in my feels, I feel like I just, I'm able to articulate how I feel so much better. So I really wanted to wait until like wedding festivities started happening and sure as shit, like I just felt so much and I was able to write it out and I think it came across beautifully in my vows. I actually finished my vows the morning of the wedding yep. and it was perfect. And that goes back to another most asked question, which is what our favorite moment of the entire day was. And for yeah. me, it was the ceremony. Like time stood still for me in the ceremony and I would suggest to everybody to write your own vows. Rather you 
choose to say them privately before, yeah. like if you don't, if you're too nervous to say it in front of your family and friends, um, and you do it like during your first, first look. First look, yeah. Um, but writing our own vows just was so special. And for me, the ceremony, I literally, I remember the sound of the birds. Yeah. I remember the sound of the water trickling. I remember every word spoke. I remember the smell. There I remember were, everything, but everything else was a blur. There were actually turkeys. Oh my God. In the back. Like, like, in the <laughs> like during our freaking vows. We're like, where the hell do these turkeys go from? We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're like, <laughs> and as we're in the middle of our vows, I like looked at him and I like mouthed him. I was like, the turkeys. And we were like, try not to laugh. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I yeah, can't. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking red roses and turkeys. And yeah. it was still perfect. It was perfect. And me personally, it was also just our time at the altar together. It was like the rest of the world was just silent and unsaturated and I could only see her and it was, it, it was, on, I told her it, when she got up and we looked at each other, the first thing I said to her was, I feel like I'm in heaven. And I truly felt that way. It was perfect. But like I said, everything other than the ceremony was such a blur. Yeah. Like, it's just like fuzz, fuzz, fuzz. Then it's like, stop. Yep. And then like, I just like remember yeah. that and everything else is fuzzy. Does it feel different being married? If so, in what way? It feels different for me. It feels totally different for me. Yeah. Not only do I ha have I committed the rest of my life to being with her and loving her and protecting and taking care of her, but I just feel like as her husband, I wanna go above and beyond. And I just think about her and like things I can do for her in moments where I might not have before. Cause it's just like, that's my wife. You know what I mean? So I'm just like proactively. What? It's oh, just oh, so oh, exciting oh, to oh, hear. Okay. I thought you were being like, mm, I don't know about that. No. no. I was like, yeah, no, but I take it more serious and it might sound funny because it's like, oh, it's just a title, but I don't know. There really is something different. I was somebody who was always against marriage growing up. So. Mm -hmm. It, yeah. it feels way different for me. For me, it's very different. And there's actually reasons that I'm not comfortable sharing Sure. Um, as to why it feels different. Cause I think some things need to be private, but it just does, it feels very different to me. And I also think that the difference, one, the number one thing is that just like saying our vows and committing our lives to each other, yeah. not only in front of our friends and family, but before God, I think is just the most powerful way of loving Super someone. Powerful. And it just feels like now it's like our hearts are just like, yeah. Like my heart We're is in one. his chest and yeah. his heart's in mine. It just feels different. I don't know. What was he thinking when he saw you in your dress? I mean, you guys, he bawled I mean, his. I bawled my eyes out. I mean, you could see our first look. Literally breathtaking. It was it was so incredibly magical and beautiful. And you just looked like a princess. <laughs> you were just the most beautiful woman on planet Earth. And how did I get here? Why? Like, I, I don't deserve this. Like, it was. Yes, you do. Even our videographers and, and photographers were crying. They were like, oh my God. Like, yeah. I can't tell you how many times they would walk up to me and be like, you are marrying the perfect man. And I'm like, I know. Back off. I know. <laughs> no, it was awesome. Your reactions was... were just the most sweetest, purest thing all day long. If I had to give any advice for the guys out there, it's like, just allow yourself to feel. I know a lot of us have barriers and walls and defense mechanisms. But like, if you just allow yourself on your wedding day to be as vulnerable as you can, it just makes it so much more intimate and special and memorable. Amen to that. Was the dress code for your guests all black? And yes, yes it was. Black everything. It was tuxes for men, black gowns for women is what yeah. the invite said. But we also let everybody know this over a year ago. Yeah, no, everybody had plenty of time. Yeah, to know, and so many of our guests thanked us. Like, thank yeah. you for giving us a color palette. This is yeah. great. They can go to any store or get on a website and filter it, like black gown. It's just <laughs> like, it made it super simple. It just looks so elegant and so <sighs> regal. And just everyone, just, their photos yeah. just look so gorgeous. Yeah. Like, there's just something about seeing like way. a group of men just All literally tuxes. tucked out. Looking back at the photos mm -hmm. and the videos, like, it looks like a timeless event. It was, it was so sick. And again, so many of our guests loved it because like they have never really gotten the opportunity to dress up so dressy before. Yeah. Okay. It's a good one. Yep. Did I consider changing into a reception dress? Yes. I had the reception dress there with me. I had it custom made by Walter, who is like the best of the best out in California. Yeah. It is so freaking cool, but it was too cold. I've never seen it. It's very short. It's much more revealing. And we had a second hair look ready for it. I had my hair girl there and I was like, I can't do this. Like I'm going to freeze my ass off. So we're going to have to find something for yeah. it. Some sort of photo shoot, some sort of moment. Let me tell you how cold it was. Okay. I had a white shirt that I had like designs in it, I guess like a pattern 
It was so cold. My nipples were so hard when I was dancing. The design or the pattern in the fabric literally chafed my nipples and they bled and I had scabs on them for a week. It was cold. He was getting Andy. From it was the awful. Office. I was literally Andy at the office. I was my on the dance floor like this. Oh god, my nipples! And she didn't believe me. And then, like two days later, I was like, "Touch my nipple," and she's like, "Wow!" I was like, "Touch." Scabs. Like, oh. I was like, oh. "Okay." <laughs> All right, this is the number one most asked question right alongside of how much did the wedding sure. cost, which is babies. When are you having babies? How many babies do you want? How many kids do you want? When are you guys gonna start trying? Yeah. All the questions. Listen, I'm just as excited as you guys are, so. But she's got a different response. We've talked about this. I sure do. Being a mom is 100% in the cards, being parents. Like if I yeah. found out that I, I can't even talk about that. Anyways. Yes, babies and kids are 1000% our plan. Um, we've had kids names for I don't even know how long. Yeah. I just ask respectfully that you guys stop with these questions and these comments. I can't tell you how many of them I've gotten since our wedding three weeks ago. And it's just a lot of pressure on a woman. And for all you know, we've been trying for the past year. We're currently trying. You don't know the current situation as far as just having kids in general. So it's just a lot for me and I just ask, respectfully and kindly stop. And when it happens, I'll let you know. But until then, we're just going to enjoy where we're at. Yeah. And just enjoy being newlyweds. Yeah, absolutely. And God will give us kids when we're ready for kids. Yep. And that's it. Did you guys have a hard time with your guest list and how did you determine who got crossed off? I will say this. For those of you who are planning to get married in the middle of planning a wedding, when we started, we both agreed with each other and we looked at each mm -hmm. other and we were like, we're gonna do this and we're not gonna worry about anybody else's feelings or emotions, like this is about us, it's our day. So we just have to do whatever we feel in our heart. After that, we kind of, well, I guess I kind of proposed this idea where I was like, I feel like the only people we should have at our wedding are people who we feel mm -hmm. like are gonna be in our lives 10 years from now and who are able to hold us accountable to the vows that we say to each other. So we just kind of decided the guest list off of that. And it was an incredibly small wedding. We only had, we ended up with 47 people total, mm -hmm. including us at the wedding. So very small, very intimate, but again, I wouldn't change it for the world. We just got to enjoy it with the people that we love the most. We weren't pulled in 800 different directions. We were able to be present in the moment and enjoy everyone. I'm sure some feelings got hurt in the process, but like at the end of the day, I feel like you have to respect that. Yeah, and it's our day and it's your day if you're getting married. And it's like, I did not want to invite anybody who it's like out of pity or like I felt bad. Like my mom wanted me to invite a few people and I was just like, but no, like I'm not close with them. Like you are. Yeah. But I'm not, and I and I I didn't want to see people that I hadn't seen in a year or two, and be like, oh my god, it's so good to see you again. Hi, I'm in a big white dress. It's like no, like I, we only wanted like our closest friends, and it was yeah. so freaking perfect. Yeah. We could have easily invited over a hundred, hundred twenty five, hundred forty yeah. people. Yeah. It was just our closest. It was like having family there. I also think it's worth saying, like for the actual ceremony, if you want that intimate feeling, do it. But you can also, if you're having it local, like invite more people to the reception afterwards. Totally, you know, totally. Like, that's not so intimate. Yeah, so it was just the, the ceremony. Some course. options for you guys. Yeah. Expense your happiest you spent. Mine is so easy, it's the venue. I feel like even if so we were beautiful. to eat hot dogs yeah, and seriously. dance in the grass, like it would have, I don't wanna say it'd be the same, but like it would, it, it kind of would. <laughs> like yeah. it's, you get with the right group of people and love in the air, you can have the best time anywhere. So yeah. for me, it was the venue because it was just such a beautiful scenery. It was so beautiful. And although this isn't technically an expense, like mm -hmm. I wanted to hook him up because he drove, they drove 28 hours to get to our wedding. It was our officiant, George. Mm -hmm. uh, when I tell you, he made that ceremony so beautiful. Oh my God. He interviewed us multiple times. We spent hours. And we're like, great friends with them. Yeah. So it worked out perfect. Cause yeah. like he's a very good, godly Christian man. And we love them so dearly. So it was just like, yeah. like immediately we're like, yeah, we're asking George. He like, just took the role <laughs> so serious. Yeah. He, dove into our relationship, like the depths. He asked really like thought provoking and mm -hmm. challenging questions. Um, and he constructed our ceremony and it was seriously one of the most beautiful things that I've oh, ever yeah. witnessed. Yeah. All of our guests who aren't married were like, like, I need George to marry me George when it's time. Yeah. So like, even though it's not technically an expense because I don't think officiants charge, like I, I hooked him up and without him, the wedding would have been completely different. 100%. That's, I think that's the only thing that I oh, can say. Oh, he made it magical. Yeah. It was perfect. Thank you, George. Love you, bro. Oh, this is my moment to shine. The question is, did anything unexpectedly go wrong? 
it sure did. I ate a bad oyster and I got sick. Yep. <laughs> In between the ceremony and the reception, I was so hungry and I'm like, you, you're mine. And the oyster <laughs> shucker, sweet girl came over and was just shucking and popping them in my mouth. And I was like, oh yes. And I think I had seven like in a row. On an empty stomach. And about 45 minutes later, I was like, oh, I don't uh -oh. know if it was bad or if she, you know, that many oysters on an empty stomach. I don't know, but it was not a good situation. And mm -hmm. I was so nauseous. I could not have one bite of food during the toast. I'm squeezing his leg and I'm like, I'm scared I threw up. I thought I was gonna puke on my dress. I felt so sick. I was able to kind of like fake it and just like hang out and enjoy yeah. the night as much as I possibly could. And then I was sick all night. Yeah, we walked away from the wedding to go get in our car and she yep. cried. I was like, oh I was baby. I bawling my eyes out. I was like, I'm so sick. Yes, of course, I wish I could go back and change that. But also when I look back at our wedding, that's not even a, like the- one So of, insignificant, It's right? so insignificant. And even though in the moment I was like, oh, Oh God, I'm dying. Like, it doesn't even come to my mind. When I look back at our wedding, I just think of our ceremony. Yeah. I think of how beautiful it was. I just, I feel the vibe. It's kind of like my biggest fear came true. I was scared I was gonna do something to screw it up and then I got freaking sick. Yeah. But it was still perfect. Okay, another question is what do the invitations look like? And I'm just gonna put a picture on the screen right here. Wow. They were very elaborate, very beautiful. Some of our guests had a hard time reading them. <laughs> Elegante. <laughs> That's okay. We had someone do like hand calligraphy on them and it's all good, but they were so, so This was like beautiful. a J, ready? Like <laughs> Disney Channel? Yeah. Welcome back to Disney Channel. <laughs> Yeah, his friends were calling us when they were getting the invites and they were like, yo, what the hell kind of wedding am I going to? This shit is so fancy. Like, yo, it's velvet. <laughs> got a velvet invite. Were the attendees not able to take pics of you to a no phone policy? Uh, we had an unplugged ceremony just because we wanted, again, everybody to be super present and locked in. We have professional videographers and photographers and like, your iPhone is not gonna capture what they're gonna be able to capture, right? Yeah. So we just wanted everybody to lock in and focus, but we did allow everybody to take photos and videos yeah. outside of the ceremony, yeah. as long as we weren't in them, because we wanted to obviously make the announcement post ourselves. Yeah, there were so many comments and DMs that I got about how, how come people are posting photos and you're not in them? And I'm like, I was a little busy being a bride. Yeah. Like, they were taking those photos during cocktail hour and when they first walked in before the yeah. ceremony, and it's like, and I was over here with my mom and I was with him and I was, Glamming, everyone again loved it. Like yeah. our guests all appreciated it yeah. because the next day we went out, we had a whole party day and everybody was like, that was so awesome. Cause I don't remember the last time that I was like that present in a moment cause they yeah. couldn't pull out their yeah. phones. Yeah. So it's just, again, it, you, they you just took like it. a break from life and just got to yeah. like, it was nice. Who all stood up with you in your wedding? People oh, want to know if we had a bridal party. Big. <laughs> we did not have a bridal party at all. Uh, we had a maid of honor and a best man. Yep. And then we kind of honored two of our other really close friends. Yep. Um, so I had my maid of honor, Linda. He had Leroy. Yep. And then we had John and Micah who just like sat really close to us. We went back and forth. We wanted to do a bridal party. And he's like, all right, if I'm gonna pick out groomsmen, yeah, it's gonna be like is, nine guys. Exactly, like I have like a super close long-term friend group and it would have been really hard to pick like four guys out of there. Wouldn't change it for the world because yep. they got to just enjoy their day as the guests yep. and my girlfriends didn't have to like work for me or like, yep. you know what I'm saying? It's like they got to sleep in and do yep. their thing and get ready on their time and then just be present and enjoy and it was perfect. And not only that, but we only ended up having room for one person to stand yes. behind us. So it worked out perfectly. That worked out perfectly. Was Jordan involved in the wedding planning? Just curious. Jor yeah, Jordan, I would say planned more than I did. We did everything together, but I mean, she is a lot busier than I am when it comes to work. So there were a lot of decisions and we both have like the same mm -hmm. taste and the same idea on things. So there were definitely quite a few things where I just kind of made I would say he decision. made 75% of the decisions. Again, our wedding planner was like, I've never seen a groom this invested and this involved in things. She would send texts and emails and he was on the phone with her all the time. I would yeah. just be busy. He was extremely Did all the involved. guest list, all the invites, the addresses. I remember when we got engaged. I remember one of your friends saying like, oh yeah, man, like get ready to just show up. Like that's all you have to do. Like the girl plans everything and all you have to do is put on your tux and show up. And he was like, hell no. Yeah, and I, I was like, first that. of all, I would not marry a guy like that. Like, yeah. I want you to be so involved. This is his day too. Yeah. Like. Also, I just have to say, I know everybody can't afford a wedding planner when you get married, but our wedding yeah. planner, literally, I can't, I can't even take that much credit. She yeah. made everything so easy. You guys, yep. her name is Noor. I'll put her name right here on the screen. She literally 
handled that. She did such yeah. an incredible job and she made that process so incredibly yeah. easy. And She's been planning perfect. my personal parties for five years now. And yeah. so when we got married, I was like, I wonder if she'll do weddings. And yeah, she's like, yes. She like laughed. She's like, yes, I do weddings all the time. Yeah. Great. And it just made it so easy. And then we found out like the following week, how many fires she had to put out on the wedding day that we oh, knew yeah. nothing about. And we're like, oh my God. And she's just calm as can be. Oh, yeah. just, just in like, the back with a fire hose. <laughs> Literally, right. just calm as can be. Yeah. And she made it so seamless. Thank you, Nora. How far off budget did you go? We went off budget. We almost doubled our budget. I'm just gonna be honest. Shit happens. Okay, great. What was your biggest splurge, flowers or DJ? I will just say that our flowers were. <laughs> I think it was the most expensive Wait. thing. Yeah, around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Florals were the most expensive thing at our wedding. Yeah. yeah. So florals was the biggest splurge for sure. Favorite part of your wedding. Now I know that we talked about the ceremony and how special that was, but my favorite part outside of the ceremony, I had a moment where I was standing off the dance floor by myself and I was watching everybody dance and Jordan, our friends, family, everyone were just dancing so hard and just laughing so much and people were just like spilling drinks and I just stood there and I was just soaking it in. I was like, oh my, it was just the best moment. I was just looking around. I was looking Sweet. at every flower arrangement. I was looking at our menus. I was looking at our cocktail napkins and my friend PK walked over and he's like, babe, are you good? Like, cause I was like taking little pictures of things and he's like, let me take pictures for you so you can dance. And I'm like, no, I, I want to do this. And he's like, oh, you're having a moment. Got it. And he's like, left me alone. That was my favorite part. Cause I feel like you don't really stop on busy days like that. And I did, I stopped for like a solid, like eight to 10 minutes and yeah. just like absorbed it. And I was yeah. like, this is so cool having everyone here for us, celebrating us and just, having such a good time. And we got to do that. We got to bring them together for yeah. that. So I had a similar moment. It was when I was waiting to get called to walk down the aisle and it was me and Leroy. And we were just kind of like standing off to the side mm -hmm. and there was like a pond around us with like a slight breeze and like you could see the sunshine come in. And I, literally, and I literally told Leroy, I said, bro, take your hands out. I said, take a mental picture right now. Like focus on everything, like the little gnats over the pond, the wind, like I had a moment like that yeah. myself where it's like, I really just like, I was like, I don't want to forget yeah. this. It literally felt like heaven. Yeah. There are butterflies everywhere, just birds chirping. I'm like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. Another question is people want to know where my dress is from. I will put the dress designer, I put her Instagram handle right here on the screen. And then a lot of people were asking if it was custom. I mentioned this earlier. I bought it like the way it was and then I added a ton of stuff yeah. to kind of change it up. But yeah. yeah, it was great. Okay, people wanted to know if you did anything to make your tux special, like customization. Oh, did I? Give me one second. If you're getting married, this goes for men and women, Try to do as many things as you can to make every part of it special mm -hmm. and intimate. When I went to go get my tux done, my boy David at Bespoke & Co Suits, he is a magician. I went in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll throw it up there. I went there not knowing how to do anything custom to a tux. I was just kind of like, I had no idea. So he started diving into my relationship and he's like, mm -hmm. What do you guys like? What do you guys like to do? What's really special to you? And I was like, well, we love to travel. Like we go to new places and share new experiences together. And there's like nothing better than that. So what we ended up doing to my tux is we put a world map inside of the liner. And then I had them put pins on every location that me and Jacqueline have ever traveled to together. And I also got a heart over San Francisco because that's where we got married. So it is incredible. David, you are a wizard. Um, it says right here, uh, exclusively hand tailored for Jordan and Jacqueline, Naples, Italy. So and sick. The back. Yep. And then under the collar, as you can see, is our wedding date. We have our wedding date. And then on his actual wrist of the dress shirt, it had our initials stitched into it. Yep. And, and then he's got like the little red details to match the inside. Yeah. And he showed me this during our first look and I, I was just a mess, just sobbing. It's just so special. Yeah, honestly, that, she didn't even cry during the first look, but when I yes, took I my- did. did. you? Yes, and the Claude spent like 30 minutes touching my No, makeup. no, no, after I showed you that though, that's what like messed you up. Oh, I was like, <laughs> and then when I saw that, that's when I I took like. When I took the jacket off and I was like, yo, can I show you something? And I opened it up and I oh, explained I everything. She sobbed. I sobbed. So this, this tux is gonna be so special for the rest of our lives because it's not just 
a normal tuxedo. There's so much meaning and detail, and I can update the pins whenever we travel somewhere new. I know, and then I just hope that one day we have a son so that like when we die, you can update that and put the pins all over where like we went as a family and the tux will just be covered in it. And then that'll yeah. be like the family heirloom that can be yeah. passed down. So special, so thank you. I could cry. Let's move on. We should do one or two more questions. Okay. Will Jaclyn Hill be no more? Will you change your brand and all? No, I'm not going to change my brand because for me, Jaclyn Hill is a stage name at this point. I have the Jaclyn Hill palette that I made with Morphe. I have all my collections with them, the Jaclyn yeah. Hill brush collection. Yeah. It's all Hill, Hill, Hill. That's That's been my name, right? And that is honestly kind of like what I owe my success to are yeah. those collaborations. like. I've never sold anything more than I've sold those palettes. At this point, I've sold yep. over 2 million SKUs of the Jaclyn Hill collection with Morphe, which is insane yeah. to think. So it's like, that's just like the brand name at this point. And if we even had a conversation about it and I yeah. told her, I was like, you, you know, like obviously legally we'll change yes, your name. Yes, like I can't wait. It was, of course, the process that we've had to start to change your name. If you know, you know, but I can't wait to get my driver's license that says Jaclyn Tory on it. Like I'm so excited. <laughs> Like that's yeah. just, yeah, that's the best. So no. legally I will be Jacqueline Tory. That's what I will want to be referred to. But as far as like my social media handles, they'll stay Hill for obvious reasons. Yeah. People who haven't seen me in a year or whatever, or they're like, oh, I wonder how that girl on YouTube is doing. They're going to type in Jacqueline Hill, not yeah. Jacqueline Tory. So exactly. it's just, it, that's just a business move. But yeah, no, I will yeah. be Jacqueline Tory. I fell in love with Jacqueline Hill, so oh, it's fine. Cutie boy. <laughs> Okay, last question. Last question is, what is something that you spent money on that you didn't need to in retrospect? Say it on three, ready? One, two, three. Food. food. <gasps> mm -hmm. Okay, for me, our food choices were so expensive and I don't regret it at all. Like it was part of the experience and we were able to afford that experience for yeah. our guests. But if I was getting married and I was on a super tight budget, he said it. He went to a friend's wedding like a year or two ago. My boy Slime got married and they served breakfast at his wedding. And I was like, this is such a good idea. Mm -hmm. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, I've been to a handful of weddings and I've never, I never think back like, oh, the food was amazing. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's Mike and about... PK had barbecue with theirs and it was mm -hmm. perfect. Like we could yeah. have done barbecue. Yeah. So it's like, do we regret it? No, the food was amazing. Was it necessary? I don't think so. I agree. So if yeah. you're gonna like find an area for expenses, I would say spend your money on the scenery, spend your money on the DJ and the scenery. Cause yeah. once you're there, people can drink cheap champagne and not care and they can be yeah. eating chicken wings, KFC and not care. They're just gonna, gonna be- Buffalo wings at a wedding? Yeah, they're just gonna be in the moment and having Invite a good time. Me. One last thing because I forgot, but so many people wanted to see Jordan's ring because we have not shown it. So here it is. We have video, a close up. Yeah, we'll, we'll show, show you. We'll show you a close up video of his ring, but you guys can see it. It's also engraved on the inside and outside. Yes. Uh, but- I wanted it to be basic and she wanted it to be, you know, a little over the top because that's but he told me that I could incorporate diamonds, so I incorporated diamonds. Yes. And I'm So the front is diamonds, the back is a plain yeah. gold wedding band, and it's got some engravings on there that are super meaningful. Yeah, my band, as you can see, is super, super tiny, very dainty. I wanted it to match the actual band. I didn't yeah. want it to be about the wedding band. I wanted it to be about the stone that he gave me when yeah. he proposed. So yeah. that's that. That's it. Okay, you guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this very long video. Our first video back as Mary. Oh. Um, by the way, we have a wedding vlog on my channel. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to see behind the scenes of the weekend itself, you can check it out. But if you want to see footage from our actual ceremony and our actual wedding, you're going to have to stick around because mm -hmm. it's coming out on her channel. Yes, we will be posting uh, an entire video from our actual videographer, Charlie, that he's putting together right now of the actual ceremony and the whole day. So that is coming soon. Yes. Just wanted to get up all the questions now for you guys. Say yeah. hi, love you, miss you, and introducing the Tories. Miss Tory. Also, that was, our, that was our wedding hashtag, was the Tory story. The Tory story, baby. Mm -hmm. That was like the thing, the theme of the whole weekend leading up to it. Yeah. You know the vibes. Like, subscribe, drop a comment below, and we'll see you in the next video. Love you guys. Tory's out. Bye.